let's consider the following physics calorimetry sample problem. If you want a refresher about calorimetry problems, please watch my video entitled Introduction to Calorimetry. The link of the video is given in the description box. Other test questions or problem set items may have different given values or setup, but the concept is essentially the same. A 1.4 kg cylindrical aluminum container has thick walls and is supported by an insulating base. Initially, it has a temperature of 240 degrees Celsius. Then, a 90.0 gram water with temperature of 25.0 degrees Celsius is poured filling the cylindrical hole. We would like to know how much water will be left in the container after the temperature of the aluminum water system stabilizes and what will be the final temperature of the system. Before solving this problem, let's visualize the system. We have a massive cylindrical aluminum container with very thick walls. This is where you put the liquid or water. The problem tells us that this cylinder is heated to a searing temperature of 240 degrees Celsius. While the whole container is at 240 degrees Celsius, a 90.0 gram water with temperature of 25.0 degrees Celsius is poured filling in the cylindrical hole. Going back to the problem, if we analyze this carefully, we can imagine that when water is poured into the very hot container, the water and container system will undergo two processes or events because of the thermal energy transfer from the hotter container towards the colder water. The first event, let's denote this event as event 1, has something to do with the phase change of water. Event 1 tells us that when water and hot container are combined, the water will continue to be vaporized until the temperature of the hot container drops to 100 degrees Celsius. The reason behind this division or distinction is that the metal container can no longer vaporize water when its temperature is 99 degrees Celsius and below, assuming that the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm. Therefore, in the second event, let's denote this event as event 2. The transfer of thermal energy from the hotter object to the colder object will just result to a change in temperature and will not result to a change in phase. Specifically, after the metal container reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature of water will continue to rise while the temperature of metal container will continue to drop until they reach thermal equilibrium temperature. Let's now solve the problem by writing first the given numerical values. The mass of the aluminum container is 1,400 grams. The specific heat of the aluminum container is 0.90 joules per gram Celsius degree. The initial temperature of the aluminum container is 240 degrees Celsius. The initial mass of the water is 90.0 grams. The specific heat of water is 4.19 joules per gram Celsius degree. The initial temperature of water is 25.0 degrees Celsius. The water's latent heat of vaporization is 2,265 joules per gram. Let's denote with T sub F the final temperature of the combined water container system. Let's focus our attention first to event 1 to answer the question, how much water will be left in the container after the temperature of the aluminum water system stabilizes? For event 1, let's denote the initial mass of water with M sub I W, mass of evaporated water with M sub EW, mass of aluminum metal container with M sub AL, and mass of water left in the container with M sub W. In solving calorimetry, we assume that the energy is conserved. The thermal energy gained by one object is equal to the thermal energy lost by another object in an isolated system. Since water is initially the colder object, we assume that it gains thermal energy when we combine water and the container. And since the thermal energy came from the container, which is above 100 degrees Celsius, this energy is enough to supply the latent heat of vaporization needed by the water to become steam or gas. With this equation, we are able to calculate the amount of water mass that evaporates. Plugging in the values, we have M sub EW equal to 77.88 grams.
To answer the question how much water is left in the container after the vaporization process, we simply subtract the evaporated water mass to the initial water mass. Doing this, the mass of water left in the container is 12.12 grams. For event 2, the container is still hotter than the water but its temperature is no longer enough to vaporize the water. In this case, the thermal energy transfer only results to change in temperature. Since water is still relatively colder than the container, it gains thermal energy in the process, while the aluminum container loses thermal energy. After some time, they will attain thermal equilibrium temperature which we denote as T sub F for final temperature. The change in temperature of water is T sub F minus 25 degrees Celsius. The change in temperature of aluminum container is 100 degrees Celsius minus T sub F. This is the ordering because Q lost has an intrinsic negative sign. Remember that the equation above is like Q gained plus Q lost is equal to zero. So when we transfer Q loss on the other side of the equation, it actually has a negative sign. Let's distribute the factors. Transfer the terms with T sub F on the left-hand side of the equation and the rest on the right-hand side. Factor out T sub F since this is our target variable and divide both sides of the equation with these terms in brackets so that T sub F is isolated. And plugging in the given numerical values, the final temperature of the water container system is 97.09 degrees Celsius. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.